Hey everyone, it's Janet. Now let's dim the lights. Oh, the horror. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about everything spooky, uninviting, and downright horrific. So I was trying to get my Instagram set up for this YouTube channel, and of course, I had created everything already before I even launched the channel, and I had the username, and it was linked to my new email and everything. I tried to log in the other day, and somehow I got permanently booted from Instagram for breaking community guidelines, even though I literally have never posted a thing. If you've ever had issues with Instagram, you know this, it is impossible to get in contact with anybody. There's no email address, there's no contact form. I looked all over Reddit, which is usually the place to find the answers. I'm working on it. I don't know if you have any ideas on how to get a freaking Instagram account back because I don't want to lose the username. I really like it. So for now, my social media is non-existent. I'm going to try to get that up as soon as possible because I'm sure everyone on my personal account is really sick of hearing me talk about horror movies. One more housekeeping thing. I have updated my Letterboxd account. I don't know if you guys use Letterboxd, but it is just about the most amazing tool to actually write down movie recommendations that people give you. And when you hear about a new movie or you watch a trailer, you can actually log it all on your watch list so that you don't have to forget about it. I've been using Letterboxd for about a year now, I think, maybe a little bit more, and have been doing my best to log all the movies that I watch and put together a really good watch list. But I actually just started creating some monthly lists for you guys. So if you do wanna follow me on Letterboxd, I have the link in my bio on YouTube, um, and I will also just put it down here so you can check it out. But yeah, every month I will be updating new horror releases in its own list so you can kind of get a comprehensive idea of what to look out for every month because as much as I would love to review everything, I am so bad at YouTube, it's just not going to happen for the time being. So at least you guys have access to everything that is out there and not just the handful of movies I'll be talking about. So the movie we're going to be talking about today is called The Innocents. And it is a 2021 Norwegian film by Eskil Vogt. And I believe by the time I'm putting this video out, it should already be out. It came out on Friday, May 13th. Yes, Friday the 13th. Um, I was actually wondering, I because I have a list of movies that I'll update as I'm watching new trailers and whatnot. And there were about seven or eight horror movies coming out on the 13th and it literally clicked to me in my sleep. Last night I woke up and I was like, <sighs> because it's Friday the 13th. So back to the innocents. Um, this one was disturbing because children, that's really all it is. We all know that children plus horror movies equal a great success. Um, and this movie was no different. It was actually very impressive because it featured a cast of brand new child actors and they nailed it. They did so well. I have worked with kids before on a film and it is not easy. And these children did such a great job, especially at being angsty and angry because they were all probably under eight or nine years old. And the ability they had to channel these really adult like micro expressions. So I will be honest, when I first heard about this movie, I was not really into it, probably wasn't even going to watch it. Um, I'm just not that into supernatural stuff. That's just me. But when I saw the ratings and heard the reviews, I had to give it a go. I'm glad I watched it. It also really did very much reinforce my fear of having children, so I probably won't be having any of those anytime soon. Thank you, The Innocents. The reviews also mentioned that it wasn't very much a horror movie, more so than a psychological thriller, which I'm really glad to know because I was able to go into it knowing that. And the worst is when you are watching a horror movie and it ends up being something else, but still a great movie. But because you had it in your head that it was a horror movie, kind of ruined it. You know, that's how I feel about The Witch. 
unpopular opinion. I don't know. I don't care. Also, this film was compared to the movie Chronicle, which I don't know if you've seen that movie, but if you haven't, go watch it. Um, but it's a very similar premise where instead of kids, it's teenagers, but they acquire these new superpowers and it's dark. But this was way darker. <laughs> it was way darker because the kids were about half their age and yeah, that's all you have to know. So the innocence centers around a young girl, Ida, and her older sister, Anna, who is severely autistic. They are raised by their mother and father, but the father is pretty much always away on work, so we don't see him very often. It's mostly just their mother. And they spend a lot of time on the playground. At one point, Ida meets a young boy named Ben, who immediately showcases to her that he has this secret supernatural talent of being able to move things with his mind. So while her and Ben are becoming quick friends, Anna has befriended a young girl named Aisha. Aisha seems to be the only one who can really communicate with Anna, who is nonverbal, and they share this form of telepathy in which Aisha can read Anna's mind and also speak to her and through her. I should also mention that Ida starts to develop the same superpowers as Ben, although hers are certainly not as strong as his. So here we have this little baby rat pack of supernatural kids, and it's all fun and games until things start getting dark. So that is where powers become too strong, emotions run too high, and um, dangerous things start to happen. And that is all I will say about that. But just imagine yourself as an eight-year-old or however old they are. Imagine yourself at that age where not getting a pudding cup would throw you into a rage. Now pair that with the fact that you can control people's minds and basically for Ben, he can actually operate other people's bodies, kind of like a Brandon Stark situation. It's not good. It's all bad. So this one was a slow burn. It definitely felt longer than it needed to be. I think it only came in at two hours, but there was definitely a section in the middle that could have been taken out and we would have seen the same character development regardless. But it was fascinating. It was dark and disturbing and it really pushed the boundaries of what we deem appropriate for children to do in horror movies, which I mean, I think at this point we should learn that there are no boundaries. The limit does not exist. Right from the get-go, we start to see signs of sociopathy in both Ben and Ida. Something very sad happens in the beginning of the film, and if you are well-versed with the McDonald triad, you probably can guess what that is. They both feel pretty neglected by their mothers. And another thing to mention here is that the mother figure is strong and the father figure, not so much. We barely see any appearances of the fathers. Two of them are raised by single mothers and Ida and Anna are raised by a mother whose husband is always away on business. And I have some thoughts on this because it very much feels like the classic mother blaming, even though the mother is the only one present in the household, somehow she is still responsible for everything wrong that happens. But back to the neglect, uh, both Ida and Ben just feel like they are unimportant. Like their mothers have other things that they're focused on besides them and that they kind of get the blame for a lot of things that they didn't do. So there's a lot of anger there and there is a lot of hurt there and you know what they say hurt people hurt people it's difficult because as hard as it is to watch these kids self-destruct and as much as you want to hate them you also see the underlying causes of their anger and their hurt and so it's hard to not feel a pang of sympathy for them even though they're out there doing all these awful, cruel things to other people. And that's where it really gets you, is you're torn. So there were a couple of troubling things in this film. Um, one that really stuck out to me, which I looked up the second I saw her on screen, is that the actress who plays Anna, the older autistic sister, is not actually special needs in real life. 
And I know that it's been done before, and I know that it's generally accepted as okay, but in this case, it just felt, if you see her on screen, you'll understand this, but it just felt like, I don't know, I just feel like we see such good representation now of differently abled people in film that it feels like it could have been done with a little bit more care. That's all. Last little thing, I was reading Alistair Ryder's can review on this film. He had mentioned that although there was diversity being represented, what was happening was the two children who were minorities in the film had single mothers and Anna and Ida have this technically nuclear, blonde, adorable family. Their father is still in the picture and her mother is a pretty gentle woman. If anything, she's just a little less present than she should be, but she is a great caretaker. So I will leave it at that for today. I hope I was able to keep this nice and short. Honestly, I haven't had any caffeine this morning and I'm feeling far less talkative than usual. So that is probably a good thing for you guys. But I will close out this episode right now. Um, this weekend, P and I are going to New Orleans, which I'm so excited for. And I was thinking that maybe I'll record a little vlog kind of thing. I promise it won't be me filming myself eating dinner. Um, maybe it will. You know what? Maybe it will. No, I, I want to do a lot of spooky things. We're going to do a swamp tour, hopefully a cemetery tour. And New Orleans is just a haunted, spooky, beautiful city. So maybe I will film something and if it works, awesome. And if it doesn't, you'll never know. Um, I just feel like it would be a really good opportunity to expand a little bit on this channel because I just don't wanna be boxed into sitting in this room and doing reviews every single time. Not that I don't love it. I will also be doing some come watch with me's where I will go to the movie theater and watch a brand new movie and give you my quick takes and impressions immediately after um, because Sometimes I'm so excited for a movie that I don't want to really distract myself by taking notes because I do take notes now when I watch movies just so I remember all of the best points to talk about with you guys. But if it's something that I'm really stoked about, I want to just kind of be in it and enjoy the experience. And those are probably the ones that I will film on the go. So yeah, a lot of exciting stuff happening in the future. Every day I'm pretty much jotting down a new idea for a segment that I want to try. Um, I'm excited to just diversify and be on the move a little bit more and switch up the content a little bit and hopefully be posting more. I know I said that last time too, but you know what? Today I think it only took me like two hours to film this versus my usual four or five. So um don't mind if I do. If you stuck around this long, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe to it. And we'll see you next week. Bye.